If you guys don't know, this is a pretty insane binder. This binder here holds some of the most amazing cards from, from an era that is absolutely insane, right? Which goes well with today, since we just did the Heart Gold Soul Silver box opening. This is not my binder. This is a binder from somebody you guys know from the community here. He goes by the name of ding a ling ding dong I mean, Fox808. Let me give him a call here. Hello. That'll be ten ninety nine for your pineapple pizza. Oh, shut up, dude. Oh, shut up, bro. That that is the fastest I've ever seen you answer Discord. That that is that has got to be the fastest I've seen anybody answer Discord. That that you you you, you, you kind of excited today, huh? How you I don't know Fox? about that. But... How you doing, Fox? If you guys don't know, yeah, this is Fox's binder. This is Fox. Uh, we've been wanting to do this kind of show and tell. He's been wanting to you know talk about and show uh, some of these cards he's got in this binder here to uh, the community. And uh, I thought it would have been no better time than after doing Call of Legends as our previous vintage opening, as well as after doing Hot Gold Soul Silver uh, base as our vintage is here. So, Fox, why don't you take it away and tell us a little bit about this binder? Well, first off, I absolutely hate the binder itself. I hate it <laughs> I as well. I things. used to have a monster binder as well. I hate it as well. I they, they're they're cool, but they kind of suck. They're they're much better for Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but. Um... This binder I threw together during the Heart Gold Soul Silver era uh, as the sets were coming out. Um, this is actually a binder that I didn't really think was that amazing at the time. And granted, all of, a lot of these cards were pretty cheap, but they've grown over time. The exception being, of course, the very end, which won't spoil it. But, um, you know, this uh, for those of you who were curious about what, what came out of this era, this pretty much is every major hit i think all right so we're gonna start off here this is the first page you have in here it's got the beautiful ladios and ladias what are these from these are i think these are from the blisters harkle soul silver yep. blisters i believe is what they come from and as you can see the art does connect they, they do this a lot where they connect to you know counterpart uh, of pokemon where the art just goes right next to each other and i just thought the art on these two were like some of the best latios and latias so that's why they're there yeah they're beautiful and there was a promo too, huh, in this 3-pack blisters. That's nice. Yep. Yeah, let's move to the next page. Here we go. Look at this! You guys might recognize these. These are the primes, baby. All right. We got Anfrost Prime. We got Blissey Prime. And we got Amazon and Twitch Prime, baby. Let's go. All right, so tell us a little, about, uh, a little bit about these primes. Is there uh, something unique or something interesting that we should know about primes? Well, the, the, the one thing I didn't realize and I had forgotten was that they took place of the reverse hollow. I thought they oh, were yeah, yeah, yeah. followers. But um, during the Hard Gold Soul Silver era, this was after level X's and before the return of EX's. So they just made primes kind of like the special Pokemon there. They don't give you extra prizes or anything in gameplay, but they usually are kind of like the the main focus of the era. Mm, I see. So what, what made you uh, what made you want to collect two of each? As you can see here. Um Honestly, I don't remember, but I think it's just because I had this binder and it fit perfectly. Ah, I see. So, how, how crazy was Donphan? It was literally in every deck. Huh? Oh my god. Uh, Donphan was a meta card during the Diamond and Pearl into the Heart Gold Soul Silver era. And it was one of the biggest counters, or at least one of the decks that could match up against what was called uh, Lux Chomp, which used Lux Ray GL level X and Garchomp C level X. And if you notice in celebrations, you have Dawn Fan, Luxury G level X, and Dark Garchomp C level X. So. Oh, I see, I see. It's all the top, you know, playable cards from back then. Kind of nostalgic for a lot of the players, huh? Yep. And I, uh, in a World's LCQ, I was running uh, Lux Chomp, and a Japanese player came in with the Dawn Fan Prime Brett, uh, deck and, and basically you? wrecked my winning streak. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> Okay, so we got all these. These are Harkle Soul Silver. I think we can get to some of the other sets here. So yep. this set here, <clears throat> Crobats and Kingdras, very nice. This one was have, uh, uh, this one was uh, unleashed? unleashed, I believe. I think this might be unleashed. Yeah. So we got two of each here. Lantern Steelix, as you can see, I gave some uh, some of these away during the Harkle Soul Silver opening. 
Crobat, Kingdra. I actually gave all of these away. Lantern and Steelix. And typically you get like what? Three a box? Or four? Around four-ish? Three, four? Uh, I believe it's a little bit more than that, but it, it, it'll vary. So mm. I, th I think there could still be primes in the unopened packs from uh, today's oh, break. Oh, really? That's impressive. That's crazy. Here we go. Then we got the Tyranitar and Earth Ring as well. I actually gave those away as well. And then we got the yeah. Espeon. Which one is this? This one's uh, Undaunted, I undaunted. think. Undaunted. Yeah, Undaunted here. What? It's an interesting theme. They, 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 so they, they actually called these primes. And what's the reason they called this a prime? They just called this um, prime. Like Pokemon just said this is prime. Just like how nowadays you, people can relate to amazing rares. It was just called amazing rare. It didn't say yeah, it's I, I think it's rare. just like a prime rare. It's not like... Like I said, treated as like a normal Pokemon. They don't give you extra prizes or don't have a special rule. Right. Um, so I, I, I think it was just like a new rarity. Mm, I see, I see. Uh, I, I love the artwork, the style of just putting that face. You know, they're so serious in them. It's kind of cool. Yep. Each of the eyeballs shine too, I noticed. Like each and every art has like this little shine to it that they do. Yep. All right, let's keep going here. We got uh, Raichu and Scizor. If I'm not mistaken, Espeon and Umbreon Prime were played together in a deck. Uh, some of the, the, the playable cards were those uh, Kingdra that we saw earlier, mm. uh, Typhlosion Prime. Um, and some of these were even given alternate arts in tins. All right, into the next set here. This one is Triumphant. Yep. Absol Celebi. The last set with uh, Primes and uh, brought in some of the very nice... Uh, legendary or mythical pokemon mm -hmm. um celebi prime is actually played in the trading card game online right now in um oh really what was what was the uh format it, it, it's a hard gold silver, silver through black and white and the if you see a celebi prime you're, you're here in for a battle <laughs> in oh, the really? trading card game online yeah electrode and uh, gengar here yep here we got machamp and magnezone Magnezone was also another uh, played card during the era. Mew is another prime that uh, you'll see in oh, uh, trading card game online nice sometimes. Too. Especially with Fusion Strike release now, everybody's uh, probably excited for for Mews. They might go back and start collecting yep. this one. And Yon when Mega. this when, when this set was uh, standard legal, that Yan Mega was also a very strong uh, playable card. I believe it. Its attacks did not require any energy. Uh, if your hand size was the same as your opponent's. Wait, what? But well, what if you're born with a smaller hand? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Oh, you mean like cards in your hand? Oh, okay. I thought you trolled it. Like, I thought that was like a, you know, like Magic the Gathering. You know, they like have like unhinged and like those, those like weird like rule. Oh, okay. It's the amount of cards in your hand. I thought they come actually about the hand size. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I got like medium sized hands. You know what I'm saying? So I probably beat like, you know, half the opponents. Uh, anyways, okay. Let's see what else we got here. Sorry, my bad. Oh, these are the lithographs. These are the secrets. Here we go. So, are you, were you guaranteed one a box? It's not guaranteed, right? I don't think it was guaranteed, but it was very common to get one in the so box. I would say in the box we open, in the packs, there there still could be the uh, lithographs, right? These are the four lithographs yep. from the four sets. They're actually pretty expensive, especially even uh, especially graded. Very very expensive. They're really they're really unique. Very very unique. Even the uh, card number is uh, spelled out in unknown, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah, it is spelled out in unknown. That's actually kind of unique. That's cool. That's cool that you have two of each. Wow. I mean, that's this. This was probably the first uh, vintage you didn't get into. I assumed you a lot. You opened a lot of heart gold, soul silver era packs and boxes back in the day. Yeah. Wise. That's crazy. Probably why you have so many of these. All right, next page here. Did we get to the crazy stuff here? Oh, are these are these the Call of Legends energies? These are. Yep. These are the Call of Legends energies. So these energies were also in Heart Gold Soul Silver, right? They were first in there as uh, non-hollows, and they made them into a holographic kind of rarity inside of Call of Legends. And these are very pricey right now. I think a lot of you guys at Cease have never seen this before. Might go out and try to collect these. All right, you got the S. It's just so nice having all of the different uh, energies with, you know, the Pokemon Shadow in the background, especially the Umbreon there. Look at that. There we go. So nice, man. Lugia there. These are sick. How can you even get two of these, huh? Two of each of these. That'd be kind of cool. You saw, like, I only this year completed the, the, yeah, the true, set of eight. True, true, true. Yeah. And then these the are... legends, baby. Yep. Oh yeah, look at that. <sighs> Two sets of Lugia, dude. They look so sick in this binder, next to each other. 
These are all pack fresh, correct? These are all pack correct. fresh. These, 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 I would say, from what I understand of Fox, these were the best conditions because he had a lot of these back in the day when he opened these packs. These are the best condition ones he had. He he he's he cherry picked these specific cards for his binder. Yep. Dang, and I uh, recently uh, sold some to a friend uh, from other sets, and some of them got nines and tens. Oh oh. And when, they, when he got to get graded. That's great. Oh, that's like a long time ago then, huh? Wow. Oh, uh, last year. Yeah, I think these. I think these graded at tens are pretty pretty sought after. People just want to yeah. have it to kind of commemorate the era, right? Now let's check out this. There's more guys from the other set. That's Harko Soul Silver. <clears throat> check out this, Kyogre and uh, Groudon. Look at those. They're so nice. And even when they're slabbed up, you can put the slabs next to each other, and they they look so good too. So so good. Look at this. This is people are asking, was there Rayquaza? Yes, there's Rayquaza and Deoxys. Look at that. Beautiful artwork, man. Yep. Let's go for another page here. Dark Ryan Cresselia. Look at these. So sinister. The Dark Ryan looks extra creepy, dude, in this, uh, yeah. in this art. What the heck? It looks like they were very artsy Halloween. with all of these legends. Mm. Palkia Dialga. Got some BDSP in a couple weeks. <laughs> oh, here we go. We got some of the dogs, baby. Entei Raiko. I think they did every combination, right? Entei Raiko, yep. like uh, Raiko Suicune and Suicune Entei, right? They did every combo right. to have them all in there. They should have just done all three in one art. That would have been so sick. But I guess they wanted to do two because all the other ones were two Pokemon, right? Together. Yep. So nice, dude. Some people are asking me for were these playable? Like, obviously they were playable, but did have people actually um, use them and play them? The most playable one was the, I believe, the Dialga Palkia. Because uh, try, try going back to that one. I believe one of the attacks gave your opponent extra prize cards that they had to try to get the time control attack. Oh, I see. Yeah, you take the top two cards of their deck and add them to their prize cards. Oh, that makes it a lot harder to win then. Okay, I see, I see. That's interesting. Uh, someone else said Entei Raiko was the most playable back then. Carpu. Oh, that is that, that is actually correct too. Entei Raiko. Was oh, there we go. Carpu bringing in yeah. the uh, the knowledge there and Rayquaza Deoxys in Harko Soul Silver Ons. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> uh, that was a format when uh, Diamond and Pearl rotated. It was Harko Soul Silver into the uh, Black and White Rayquaza era. Rayquaza Deoxy One Worlds. <laughs> oh wow! Hey Carpu, yep. bring in the knowledge, baby. Let's go. Actually, I, the funny thing is I played the Rayquaza Deoxys myself, so it's kind of weird that I didn't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Entei and Suicune. And then we got these Legend Boxes. Can you tell me about these Legend Boxes? Um, They were one of the cards that you could use to get Legends out. I just threw them in there just as a filler <laughs> after the Legends, and I actually have a fourth Reverse Hollow one somewhere. And I'm... No, you do have it somewhere. I, I, I think I saw it. You had it somewhere. Yeah. Here we go. Oh my god, dude. Can I get some Craygasms in chat? Shiny Groudon, Shiny Kyogre with the Hollow Groudon, Hollow Kyogre from Call of Legends. Shiny Rayquaza with Shiny Deoxys with Hollow Rayquaza, Hollow Deoxys, all from Call of Legends. The cream of the crop, cherry picked, best condition cards. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, this was another one that was really hard to complete and was only completed um, earlier this year, actually. Boom! Dialga Shiny, Palkia Shiny, Lugia, which is the number one there, Shiny, Ho-Oh Shiny. Oh, is there something right there on there? I thought I saw something there. Uh, anyways, uh, Dialga Hollow, Palkia Hollow, Lugia Hollow, Ho-Oh Hollow, all from Call of Legends. Beautiful. A lot of these were, did you trade for them or did you open them? Do you remember? Um, a uh, majority of them I had opened myself. Uh, um, there were a few that I did have to trade, for, and one that was gifted. Um, <laughs> wow, that's crazy, dude. Yeah. Did you? So, but out of all the hard gold soul server, you probably didn't open that much Call of Legends, right? Mm, I, I mean, a few boxes, sure. <laughs> and, and now a few boxes would be like a lot, but um, you know, back then it was like it was a really cheap set. Nobody really wanted it. Jeez, and uh, dude, I want it. 
Jesus, dude, this set's this set's so good. How do you like even back then? How you see this set and go like, oh, it's not gonna be that good, or ah, I don't really, yeah, I don't really like it. You know, like, uh, bro, how you not like this set, man? Right. It's ridiculous, bro. And then you even got the uh, the tin promos too. Sweet and tin, yep. Michael, tin promos. Didn't it come with two cards in the tin? One shiny and one not. Um, potentially. I did. It's been so long. I don't remember. I think the other one was like a, a shatter. Glass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, I think maybe. So. I think so. Yeah, yo, Fox. Thanks for uh, thanks for letting us uh, take a look at this beautiful binder and uh, kind of uh, reminisce it and uh, look back at this era as well as get baited by cards that we now want to go buy and collect because we've seen these now. There's no way to unsee them. <laughs> yeah. Anything to add on to this uh, this these era of cards, I guess. Um, I well, I'm just looking forward to what's coming up next because. We're going into another remake era. So this was the remake for Gold and Silver with Hard Gold and Silver. Right. Uh, with Brilliant Diamond and uh, Shining Pearl, we're, we, we're sure to get... The, well, I mean, it's already shown that we're getting sets tying into the, the, the yeah. remake. Yeah, these so. stars are very, very much mimicking the Diamond and Pearl level Xs. So we're, we're seeing that kind of play on these types of cards coming in with um, this next block. So it should be very, very exciting to see. I mean, both for the actual collectible, collector side as well as for the playability side, hearing a lot of you know changes to the game, so that's very very exciting. Yep, and still got to take care of Fusion Strike though. Got a lot of stuff to go through. Well, your luck's been pretty damn good, so I think you'll finish that up pretty quick. I will say that. Anyways, uh, Fox, pleasure having you on to, uh, the stream today. You know, thanks for letting us share the binder, and thanks for selling me the binder for five bucks. All right, thank you very much, Fox. Talk to you later. I'll catch you later.